Hey, everybody, it's the coach. Welcome to the special Saturday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see a man on his eighth NFL team, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and the Miami Dolphins as they take on Jacoby Brissett and the Indianapolis Colts. With that, let's get on up to Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. For the call, we bring in our broadcasters, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, we are pleased as always to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here at Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with the Miami Dolphins. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, happy to be with you. And CD, as we get this thing going, give the folks at home something to keep their eye on. The running game for both teams, because I think this is going to be an old-fashioned, old-school type of a game. Physical, who wins up front, who runs the ball the best and controls the clock, they will come out the victor. the punter Rigoberto Sanchez on to get us started and off we go on EA Sports this will be taken in at the one and not a bad return here he gets it out to the 25 yard line so here to lead out the offense in his first year as a Dolphin but 15th overall it's the bearded veteran Ryan Fitzpatrick and the new coaching staff coming in, they finally decided to pull the plug on the Ryan Tannehill era after seven seasons and no playoff wins. So inner Ryan Fitzpatrick signed in free agency, fittingly on St. Patrick's Day, by the way. But last year with Tampa Bay, you remember Fitzpatrick got off to that incredible start. Over 400 yards passing in each of the first three games of the year, 11 total touchdown passes. And now it's his time to do it with Miami. They'll run it here. This is Mark Walton. And right away, they're going to stack him up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. A look now at the Miami offense. And when you see Devontae Parker in a uniform, you expect big plays from him. Remember, he was the 14th overall pick out of Louisville in 2015. Hasn't quite reached those heights, but he's a huge red zone threat. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Draw play. Here's Walton. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. And now a look at the defense for the Colts. Outside linebacker Justin Houston has made the move from Kansas City to Indianapolis to complement the Colts' young pass rushers with his veteran presence and four Pro Bowl appearances. He wants to get to the quarterback just like the young guys and show that those 52 sacks in the last five seasons are still on the way. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. Now Fitzpatrick hit. It's out. He lost the football. And the Colts pick it up. And they are going to score on the fumble return. Touchdown, Indianapolis. They give some kudos to the defensive coordinator, I think, here. They bring the blitz, they dial it up, and it turns into six points for them. It's so nice to hear you actually give kudos to the defense. It is so nice to such an offensive guy like that. I love it. He dialed things up, and boy, a big play resulted for his guys. Well, you like the credit to the defense there, right, my friend? Yeah, you do, do I ever. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. And this is good to make it 7-0 Indy. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So 
here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This one fielded at the five. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And that last possession, really a gut punch. You seemingly had it working. You were in the midst of a very strong drive. Then suddenly the fumble, and you're watching the back of a defender's jersey as he brings it all the way in the other direction. There's not much more I can add to that. I thought you summarized it perfectly, partner. You've just got to regroup and start putting another drive together. That's all you can do. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Albert Wilson, the intended receiver there. And that'll bring up second down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks... They'll miss up 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you walk perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite goal in Jersey. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. That makes them now 0 for 2 here in the first quarter on third down conversions. And now they'll look to their defense because they need them to step up so they don't fall further behind here in the early going. On fourth down, Matt Hawk is on to punt. Chester Rogers deep for Indianapolis. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Colts led onto the field by their quarterback, Jacoby Brissett, who has this team right now at five and two after a week eight victory against Denver, 15 to 13. The Adam Vinatieri field goal late. It was a pretty underwhelming performance for Brissett, Charles, 15 to 25, no touchdown passes. But he continues to excel, and, and this team continues to do more than most people thought they would. I would agree with that, and the most important number he had in that stat line throwing, zero interceptions, so he took care of the football. And as you noted, could be clutch, right? And he was clutch down the stretch, avoided a Von Miller sack that would have been a safety on the final series, and completed a 35-yard pass to T.Y. Hilton to set up the game-winning field goal. So sometimes your stat numbers don't tell the whole story, and they really rely on Jacoby Brissett to be their leader with Andrew Luck's retirement. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Here's the second year back out of NC State, Naheem Hines. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. This is Hines, and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Ready, set. Watch 
On second and 11 now. Brissett. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. And we look now at the offense for Indianapolis. Brian Kelly is a great example of how valuable the centers have become in the NFL. A former first-round pick, he was plugged in immediately to be a starter to handle big nose tackles as well as blitzing linebackers and also able to move and get out into the run game and get to the second and third level and deliver blocks. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Brissett looking deep for Hilton, and that'll be incomplete. Now they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, <laughs> two drives with turnovers. Now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. Fitzpatrick now to throw on first down. And this is caught. It's Parker. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. He missed on his first three passes, was 0 for 3. Now gets a connection. Maybe that'll get him going. Yeah, it wasn't a time for panic, but there was some concern because once you start in a certain pattern, you wonder, can you get out of it? And that flips the other way, too, when you're throwing it really well. In this case, now he's got his first completion. They think he might be off to the races. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll run with a second-year man from ASU, Kalen Balage. And three yards there takes him to the 45. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. the delay it's Balage, and they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield it's a loss of four now third down plays like we just saw there that's why they're up right now and the defense they're doing their job yeah it starts with the guys up front so when you talk with gms or putting together a team a lot of them say we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Play action now, Fitzpatrick. And down he goes, Fitzpatrick sacked. Justin Houston making his presence felt there in the backfield. We've watched this a long time, and I still don't believe we get it. Third and long, why are you calling play action? Because yeah, they're not going to bite defensively, right? No, not at all. I did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams, that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking. But to me, it seems silly. Yeah, well, they're silly, and it leads to a play action sack. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. 
And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. And they'll start on the ground with Hines. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. After one, 7-0 on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Indianapolis with the homestanding Colts in possession. As they've got a second and eight forthcoming. From the 22, here's second and eight. That's right, baby. They don't want it. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. An eligible receiver. Well, let's see who this is on. Offense. They get the all-pro guard there, Quentin Nelson. Still second down. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. I got you, boy. I got you, boy. Out of the gun, Brissett. He's got Jack Doyle. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Third down, Brissett. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the second time. Here's Williams to return. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And it'll be Dolphin football. So now here come the Dolphins. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. That's Walton. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for 13 at a Dolphin first down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. While well, we have a moment here after that incompletion, with it being Halloween week, let's do something Halloween themed. Give me your three scariest defenses in the NFL. Ooh, I love your theme. I like that. Corny as ever. Yeah, corny but good. All right, let's start with the Minnesota Vikings because their ability to mix and match, how cohesive they are as a veteran unit, and big time playmakers at every level. And Harrison Smith, the fixer, the guy can go up and down, backwards and forwards, and make plays for you. Number two for me, 
San Francisco. They could easily be number one. The problem is New England is just out striping everyone. But think about what San Francisco is doing. Youngsters up front, guys in the back end, Richard Sherman having a career year, a rebirth type of a year. But New England giving up 6.7 points per game, or is it 7.6 points per 7.6. 7.6. I'm trying to make it even better than what it already <laughs> is. But those Patriots, you can't really name too many stars. Probably Stephon Gilmore, their corner. But after that, they just play so well. Take it and right down Broadway. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Jakeem Grant, 66 yards. As they are now on the board here in the first half. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. A drive there of just four plays, and it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Colts offense coming back out. It's a team that, as we said, in week eight beat Denver 15 to 13. And it was an interesting game for Adam Vinatieri. He missed a field goal on the Colts opening drive, missed the extra point on the lone touchdown, but then he did what Adam Vinatieri does, Charles, when it mattered. With 30 seconds left, he hit the game-winning field goal. And he has kept the confidence of his head coach despite his struggles earlier this season and his struggles in this game against Denver. A lot of coaches say, okay, hold on a second. This isn't really working. They would have called offense differently. Instead, Frank Reich settled for the field goal. He called runs on second and third down inside the Broncos 35. He said, I felt like we were inside Vinny's range. Worked, very, worked out very well for Frank Reich. Didn't work out for Matt Nagy in Chicago when he knelt and then Eddie Pinero missed the field goal. Yeah, but Vinatieri hit the 51-yarder. Because he's Adam Vinatieri. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's why they call him the GOAT, right? Colts won, have won three in a row now to get to five and two, and they'll be at the Steelers in week nine. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. I'm coming after you. From the gun, here's Brissett. They'll find Hines out of the backfield. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Now that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Let's go! Let's do it! Out 
comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. They'll start on the ground with Belange. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Anthony Walker, the other Colts linebacker with over 100 tackles a year ago, making the play there. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Looking to throw on second down. Fitzpatrick, that's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. that coming up at halftime we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman he's in Orlando and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report here's Fitzpatrick now they go screen it's complete they hold him to only two there on the screen it's second down in order for a screen pass to break big a lot of things have to come together and be well executed but all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game Fitzpatrick, the old war horse, getting everybody up to the line quickly. To throw again on second down. Fitzpatrick on the right side open is Gesicki. That catch good for five. It's third down. The catch is like that. That's what the Dolphins envisioned when they took Gesicki high in the second round a season ago. He did have 22 catches as a rookie, but did not find the end zone. Certainly feels more comfortable wearing number 88, his old college number, after sporting 86 as a rookie. Now Fitzpatrick. And that is incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. Throw left side, complete. That's Hines. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Here's Brissett. That's complete to his receiver, Kane. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. The Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Throwing, Brissett, Rodgers brings it in. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Down. 
First down now, but that clock rolling. Brissett on first down. An incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. You got nothing. Brissett again. Pressure here, and down he goes. Sack back at about the 43-yard line. Give the sack to Jerome Baker. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7, our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 our score. This will be fielded at the 8. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number 3. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter 3. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Third quarter starts with a run by Mack. Tackle that time by Jerome Baker out of Ohio State. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Here's Brissett. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. It's a first down on a gain of 10. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Draw play, this is Hines. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. So statistically, both of these offenses have a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. <laughs> Off the play fake. Here's Brissett. Rush coming, and he's taken down. We call that sack block. Oh, 
free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. To throw, Brissett. And the catch made by Hilton. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A well-executed 22-yard gain. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 48-yard line. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. One thing that's great about watching him run, Charles, he doesn't hesitate. He got to the left side of his own line and just went. So there's two ways to look at that. One, just absolutely unconcerned, just takes off and goes. But more the latter, I think, which is he has absolute confidence in the guys in front of him, the guys doing the blocking for him. He just takes it and goes with abandon. That'll be caught by Rodgers. He'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark him down at the 9. Another nice gain. 16 yards there and a first down again. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Brissett sets to throw it. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. No gain there on the completion. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. On the bootleg, it's Brissett. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking for the rookie Paris Campbell, but now it's third and goal. Well, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. He had no options downfield there and just chucked it out of bounds. There was no one open. He was in the pocket. Where was the intentional grounding call? Oh, you wanted the flag. Of course I did. I'm a defensive guy. You know that. Where was the flag? The officials point out that someone was in the area. He got away with one. Vinatieri's kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. Vinatieri, the NFL's oldest active player, also the league's all-time leading scorer, past Morton Anderson last year. Yeah, he turned 46 in December of 2018. He really can't see it in his leg, maybe in the beard. You can see it in the beard. Maybe in the beard, that's about it. But as long as he's booting them the way he's booting them, keep going, big guy. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. 
That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here at half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. A running play on first down will get four up to the 29. He's brought down there by Kenny Moore. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Second and six, just inside the 30. Kill, kill, kill. They run again with Walton. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. We've seen this a few times in this game. That offensive line just, I don't know if you want to call it out physical, out tough, whatever you want to use. And what people do when that is happening, when they're getting dominated that way, they spread things out a little bit, make it more of a space game, and allow your skill position players to make a few plays out in open field. Take away the physical element gives you a chance. For the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. Looking left side and he's got a man. It's Grant. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. That one good for 13 at a Dolphin first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield and broke down the defender. Mike, made him what do you think, mean by that? Bro? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. They run on first down as they get about three. Second and seven, forthcoming. Pierre Desir in on the stop. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From the 45 on second down, Fitzpatrick. This one into the hands of the running back, Belage. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Play fake. It's Fitzpatrick. And he's going to be taken down. They sack him on what will be the final play of quarter number three. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Here's Matt Hawk now. He's been terrific so far. 
Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. Out of bounds as he appeared to be. They'll start on the ground with Mack. And they'll get him down up past the 15. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. So that last play gives him a little more space now. Here's first and 10 at the 16-yard line. On first down, it's Hines. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game we try to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll try to throw now. Brissett, complete to Hilton. And he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. I know when you're looking at the scoreboard clock, we're getting near the end of this game. But they were in what was really called four-minute offense. And that's practice, being taking care of the football, taking time off the clock, not giving them a chance to come back. But bottom line is, what did I say in the beginning? Taking care of the football. That didn't happen. Didn't do it. A costly turnover. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now. <laughs> <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Good starting field position for the Dolphins as they have it first and 10 at their own 42. Fitzpatrick now after the fumble recovery. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. A Miami first down. That one going for a gain of 11. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. This quarterback now 11 of 16 through the air. It's first and 10. To throw, Fitzpatrick. Completes it to Hearns. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A good pick up there, 22. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy.
Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. Throw left side complete. That's Walton. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. Looking to throw again on second down. Fitzpatrick. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. That's going to be caught. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. They come out here in the eye. Here's a run with Belage. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Throwing Fitzpatrick. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Anthony Walker gets him for a loss of 10 yards from his linebacker spot. So they were stopped trying to run the ball on first down. Now they take a sack on second down. The offensive coordinator's got to find a way to flip the script on the defensive coordinator because right now the defense has the advantage. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They face a critical third and goal now in a one-score game. They'll look to throw, and he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Danico Autry in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. Well, when this drive began, the offense only needed a field goal, but the defense ramped up the pressure, and after back-to-back -back sacks, they're feeling confident they might keep him off the board. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Sanders kick is good. And with a little more than a minute to go, we are all tied. So a big kick to get this back to even. Now the worry is, did you leave too much time on the clock? Because another field goal the other way, that does you in. You're exactly right. You didn't get into overtime yet. So now as a defense, you've got to think to yourself, you can't play prevent defense and just give up big chunks of yardage in front of you. But you also can't let anyone behind you. So you sit right on the line between the two, play the best defense you can, and not make it easy for them to move the ball downfield. now at 
10 apiece as the kick's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Here's the Dolphins' defense as they head out to set up shop. They've played great football so far. Now, can they push this one to overtime? That's the question. It's almost been a stalemate, hasn't it? And, in fact, on the scoreboard, it's exactly where we are. All even. You don't want to make that mistake now that gives up a big play. I remember doing a game a few years ago. Falcons at Steelers to start the season. It was that type of a game, and it ended on one quick sprint in overtime and a great defensive effort was wasted at that point. And they're hoping to avoid that here. Here's Brissett. He's got Jack Doyle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Good yardage there for the Colts. 18 and a first down. Huge first down, got to hurry. Yeah, now they have to get up there, get set, and then spike it. First down now, but that clock rolling. 55, my God, 55. Brissett looks to throw. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. He was looking for his running back, Naheem Hines. But it'll be second down. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Now Brissett. That's complete to his receiver, Kane. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Fourth down now and defensively. Charles, you know, they're just asking this crew for one more stop. And you know that they're feeling the momentum right now. But they have to be very careful not to get over-exuberant, over-excited, and blow an assignment and give up the big first down. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. And out come the Dolphins now. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. In a tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Fitzpatrick. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Fitzpatrick to throw. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Second down 
So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Here's Fitzpatrick. And that is incomplete. Seven seconds remaining. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Fitzpatrick. He's going to let this go for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Able to get there and pick it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Now an open man. That's the tight end, Gasicki. It's complete. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now Balage. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 12 yards there and a first down. Well, how many times do we say in this game is speed kills and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice gain. Fitzpatrick on first down, completes it to the tight end, Smythe. Seven yards, the pick up on the pitch and catch. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. A draw play now, Balage, And that didn't fool anybody. He's gonna be dropped in the backfield. He lost two there, and it's third down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. And they need five yards on third down here to keep this opening drive of OT alive. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. He's got a man, it's Williams. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. A Miami first down on the 14-yard pickup. 
He did not have a catch till that moment. Pretty good time for his first one, though, here in OT. I would agree with that. And just think about how they had to cycle through all the play sheets, right? Tried to find ways to get a lot of people the football. In this case, as you said, he hadn't had a catch all game. Now they find him in a key moment. Really well done. This quarterback now, after the pick on the last drive, three for three to start this drive. It's first and ten. Now a carry for Walton. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second and nine, Fitzpatrick. Now a short one to Gesicki. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row. I'm going to stay confident, keep playing it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. On the right side open is Gesicki. Now the ball comes loose, and the Colts pick it up. He's got a convoy, and he might be gone. And he brings it back to the house. It's a touchdown, and in a crazy inning, a defensive score wins it. our breaths from that electric finish you get an overtime that's one thing it was a great four quarters but then an OT not only to win it but to win it on a defensive score wow oh definitely and I think from now on we're going to definitely travel someone who can help us because I thought I was going to pass out at the end <laughs> not just getting to the overtime but the plays in overtime that led to this one and to finish it on a defensive touchdown a takeaway that gets into the end zone I'm not rooting for anyone, but boy, I love to see games finish that way. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.